This is The Pulse, and I am Philip Swisegood, back with my good friend and co-host George McCandless, who is the president and CEO of the United Way of Central Georgia. We have a very special episode for you today, coming live from Mercer University's boardroom. The Pulse, what we do here is we interview people across the state who are passionate about fighting poverty and providing basic needs to those in Georgia. And joining us today is someone who's very special, and that is Lucille O'Neill. Lucille, thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. I'm glad I could be here today. Now you have some some uh, famous offspring that we'll talk about here in a little bit. But first, I want to hear about you. What is it you do and ultimately why it is you call Georgia home? Well, I only recently moved to Georgia. I'm originally from Dublin. Matter of fact, born in Dublin. We moved around the United States for 20 years. We landed here in McDonough, Georgia the last three years because my son lives here and he wanted us all to be together. So. I'm happy to be a resident now of the great state of Georgia. That's fantastic. One of the things that you were telling us about before we started was that you have started an organization that you're really passionate about and it's fulfilling a unique void in the community and it's called the Odessa Chambliss Quality of Life Fund. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you guys do? Well, I have to tell you the backstory first. The fund was established in honor of our mother whose name was Odessa Chambliss. She had ovarian cancer and she passed away in 1996, but a few years before her passing, one of the doctors told us that it is not the quantity of years left for your mother to live, but it is the quality of her life from now on that will make a difference to all of you. Wow. So at one time, all at one time, my brother and my two sisters, we wanted to do something to honor our mother, so we developed the Odessa Chambers Quality of Life Fund, and we raised money for nursing scholarships in her honor because she was a nurse by profession. We provide tuition, we provide emergency funds for some individuals that may need funds in case of emergency, we support community programs. So we do a lot of things, and we've been very, very active, and every time, every one, once a year, every year, we have an event called the Faith and Fellowship Luncheon where we come together with our faith-based community and we just celebrate life. Quality of life is on our brains and we love it. And I have one brother and I have two sisters and we are the facilitators of the funds. Lucille, we're, as Philip said, we're very excited to have you here. And at our United Way, we're very focused on education as the road out of poverty. And I know uh, in your background, uh, you actually put your education on hold while you were raising your children. But then once they left, you went back and you now have your bachelor's, your master's, and, and a PhD. So talk a little bit about why education is so important. And I believe you even made your tallest son go back and promise you that he would get his degree, uh, regardless of how much money he had made playing basketball or in the movies? Well, there was a time many years, well, I'm not gonna say many years ago, but a few years ago, we realized that education would take him far. So we were telling him, you have to set yourself up so that the opportunity will present itself so that you can receive a scholarship. We couldn't afford to send him to college, but we knew that that was the way. So education, after high school has always been important to us and we pushed him, our oldest, our eldest we now call him, we pushed him to go further and get an education because it would benefit him when he became an adult. Now I have to tell you, I, have a special, I got a special gift, George and Philip. This is so special because after he went to college and all my children left home, he put Aisha through college, which is my youngest daughter, Latifa and Jamal, all of them, he paid for their college education. But when it came to me and I shared with him, I want to go back, I want to go back. He said, as long as you go and keep your grades up, I will pay your tuition. So I'm wow. still excited about <laughs> wow. that. I'm still excited about that. And I have three degrees. One of them is an honorary doctorate. However, I worked and got my other two certificates and degrees. And I'm just excited about what education can do for individuals. I say now I'm certified and I'm surely qualified because I have my paperwork. I am so blessed when it comes to that. But it was just so funny because that's what we used to tell him. You go to school and keep your grades up so that you can keep your scholarship. But when he said to me, you keep your grades up and I'll pay your tuition. I'm like, hallelujah. <laughs> 
deal. Um, now, you're, the son that we're actually talking about is the uh, well-known, famous basketball player Shaquille O'Neal. And um, George and I had both read a few articles about some interactions that you had had with him surrounding money. And what was so fascinating to me was that you said several times that it wasn't the money that impressed you about his career. It didn't matter how much money he made. That wasn't what impressed you about his career. Why is that to you? Well, I first want to remind the listeners that he is the doctor with the PhD. Is he, he really? One. Yes, he wow. does have one he, that he earned. And he went far above and beyond what I asked him to do. I only wanted him to graduate from college, me and my husband, that was it. But he continued his education. But I realized that not only having education, but your character, your integrity, the morals that you've learned, all of those would be important. And so we continue to stress the fact that you got to be a better man. You got to, you know, be a good man because people are watching you. And he said once, he said, I'm not a role model, but I strive to be a real model. And that right there told me a whole lot about his character. Wow. And I just want to um, say that I'm very, very proud of him. I'm proud of all of my children, but I'm especially proud of him because it's not about the money. And I keep telling him, you have been blessed so that you can be a blessing to so many others. And he gets it. He gets it better than most people that I know. He really gets it. That's great. So among uh, your many talents, you're also an author. Uh, you've written a book, Walk Like You Have Somewhere to Go. Uh, talk a little bit about the inspiration for the book and, and what does that title exactly mean? I'm so proud to be an author, and I don't call it a book anymore, I call it my testimony. Hmm. And the title of it is Walk Like You Have Somewhere to Go, but I learned a long time ago from the pastor in our church. She was a woman pastor, which was uncommon in the 1960s, but she taught me to stand up because I had an issue with being tall. I didn't want to be tall. I felt awkward and had low self-esteem, but she called me one day to do an assignment. And of course, I'm shuffling my feet and didn't want to do it. I had such an attitude, I didn't know why. But I didn't want to be bothered, I didn't want to be seen. But she called me and she pointed that finger at me one day. And she said, Lucille, you come here and you walk like you have somewhere to go. But what I also learned from that sentence is that I am to walk every day with my head up, be courageous, stand strong, and walk with a purpose. I found my purpose. I found it, and when I found it, I share it. Like I said, I'm certified and qualified. I am your motivational speaker for today. <laughs> well, that's a great message, and one that no matter where you are in life, uh, you know, and especially with the children, you should never hang your head. Um, I mean, everybody, you know, has a value. Absolutely. And I would also add, walk like you have somewhere to go. It can be found on Amazon, is that correct? Yes, it's still being sold on Amazon after 12 years. Fantastic. So if you want to check this book out, give it a look on Amazon. Again, Walk Like You Have Somewhere to Go by Lucille O'Neill. Uh, I would really encourage you to do that. Now, Lucille, I do have to tell you, George and I were both sports guys. And so I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to ask you, on behalf of both of us now, at what point did you realize that you had a, a truly unique athlete in Shaquille O'Neal. Like, was there a certain point that you realized, ma'am, this, this guy is going to be one of the best basketball players to step on the court? People don't realize Shaquille has been playing basketball since he was six years old. Really? And you know that he's an elder statesman now. That's what I call him because <laughs> he turned 50 not too long ago. But I remember when he was growing up, he always shared with me that he wanted to be a professional basketball player. Do you remember the McDonald's All-American mm -hmm. game? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I first saw him come across the court, dribbling the basketball, and they call that coast to coast, mm -hmm. I said, oh, maybe we really can do something with this. I realized that he had a gift. It's a gift that he has. And I knew that just seeing that, he would go far, but he played baseball, he played soccer, and he played football, but he grew so tall that basketball was the best sport for him. 
So he stuck to basketball and he worked very hard to be in the place that he is in now, a Hall of Famer. And I was gonna say, as I understand it, it wasn't that he was j just this absolute natural talent, which he obviously was, but he also worked really hard. I understand he has an incredible work ethic. Very hard, yes. I have to tell him sometimes, you need to take a rest. <laughs> But it's just in him to work, and I'm happy that he's not a, a lazy man. He does work. Everything that he has, he has worked. And I tell young people today, if you really want something, put in the work. That's, that's for your education. That's for your business if you want to have it. And it's even for your lifestyle. Put in the work because things are not handed to you. You have to work. And if you desire if you desire something and you have that determination, you will put in the work without any extra effort. And I'm so happy that he does that. And I have another daughter, Latifa, and I have another young son, Jamal, my baby girl, Aisha. She's recently passed away, but all of my children have great work ethic, and I'm proud of them for that. So a lot of the work we do uh, is with uh, young mothers. We have a parents as teachers program where we go into the home and help them. Uh, a lot of people may not know, you were a teenage mom with Shaquille. And could you talk a little bit about how the community and the uh, services you know, helped you as you were finding your way with the young son? When Shaquille was born, I was 17, about to be 18. I was on the welfare. And I realized that um, Shaquille's biological one didn't want to be a father. So I, I knew that I had to take care of this young man child and I had to do it on my own. I got a job and I went to work, but they had programs back then that helped single mothers to get jobs and remain on um, the welfare. But to make a long story short, I believe that if the single mother makes an effort to want to do something, that the help will come. Where I come from in New Jersey, we always talk about the village. It takes a village to raise a child. And so we had the parents, we had the grandparents, we had the neighbors, we had the Boys and Girls Club, we had the Salvation Army, we had the United Way. We had so many programs that would really pitch in if you tapped into what they were providing. And I understand that the United Way has been around for 100 years. That's a long time. That's older than most of us here tonight. <laughs> and so the programs that support children and families, that's a beautiful thing to do because what if the tables were turned? And I always think about that because I was on the other side. So now I'm on this side. So I'm just happy to know that the services are still out there because I use some of them. I used some of them and it helped me one step at a time. And that's what we should continue to do. When I die, I want to leave like this. You can't take any of this with you. Right. Absolutely. That's such an encouraging reminder. And before we began filming, you were telling us about the connection that, that you had to the Boys and Girls Club, which is one of the groups that United Way helps support. And your children have a connection with them as well. Can you talk about that a little bit? Where I was um, living in Newark, New Jersey, they had a Boys and Girls Club down the street. And my grandmother who raised us, she would always say, go with your brother. Go with your brother. And back then it was not the Boys and Girls Club, it was only the Boys Club. Uh -huh. But they would allow me to come in if I would be quiet. So that's what I did. I'd come in and hang out with the, you know, the young people that were there. But it played such a important part in my growing up because the people that worked at the club, they were a source of encouragement. And like I mentioned before, I had low self-esteem even before I knew what that meant. But the care that they gave the young people that came through those doors, it was just so amazing. And for me to have experienced that, when I introduced that to my children, it was, it was because I knew about the services they provided. And I knew that there were people there that cared. And I knew that they would help me being a parent, they would help me. So I encourage everybody that has, does have children, tap into the Boys and Girls Club today. Because, uh, I mean, it has helped so many children. And if you've never seen the PSA that says, great future start here, mm -hmm. I want you to go to YouTube and take a look at some of the young people that go through those blue doors 
that are in front of the Boys and Girls Club, and then you look and see who's coming out. Denzel Washington, Jennifer Lopez, Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Jackie Joyner Kersey, just so many, Cuba Gooden Jr. So many that have experienced the Boys and Girls Club. And there's gonna be many more as long as they're in existence, just like the United Way. Well, you know, uh, Lucille, hopefully there'll be a lot of people watching this interview that are inspired by your story. And, but maybe that haven't been supporting United Way and, and haven't been supporting these families in need, these young mothers in need. What would be your message to them as to why they should support uh, an organization like ours? My message would be, think about if it were you. Easily the tables could be turned. Think about the fact that somebody did help you get to a certain place. And in every blessing that you have, it's better to give than receive. There's so much joy in giving, so much joy in giving. And if you want to stay happy, make somebody else happy in the course of a day. Mm, well, thank you. Uh, Lucille, this, this has been a real treat to have you down here in uh, central Georgia with us and uh, to be willing to spend a little time and share some of your story and, and you know, talk about your, your incredible life. And in closing, I just like to remind people, you know, not every child uh, that's in need is going to grow up to be seven feet tall and be uh, an NBA all-star. But some of those children just might grow up with, with the right support to be a doctor or a lawyer or, I mean, they may grow up to be a, a nurse or you know, whatever, but they can't do that without somebody helping them. And that's what we're asking y'all to do. If you would support our work, uh, we work with families like a young Lucille uh, th that have children that all they need is a little bit of support to have a much better life. And so in, in closing, again, we appreciate you watching. Please watch for future episodes of Pulse. And please consider supporting the work that we're doing in the community. Thank you.